Revival linguistics would help people engage in language reclamation, revitalization, or reinvigoration to become more realistic and to abandon discouraging slogans such as give us authenticity or give us death. Have a look at the article written by Nancy Dorian entitled Purism versus Compromise in Language Revitalization and Language Revival. Dorian argues perspicaciously that conservative attitudes toward loanwords and toward change in grammar often hamper efforts to revitalize endangered languages such as Tiwi near Darwin, Australia. Revivalistics thus can assist indigenous communities in a realistic, non-puristic way without selling them myths. Revivalistics discards what I call an imprisoning purism prism, an imprisoning purism prism. It makes the community members realize that shift happens. Shift happens. Shift with an F. And there is nothing wrong with shift happening. Shift, such as hybridization, results in new diversity, which is beautiful. Seven Jews have changed the world. Moses said, everything is in the head. Jesus said, everything is in the heart. Marx said, everything is in the stomach. Freud said, everything is in the loin. <laughs> Zuckerman said, everything is in the tongue. Zuckerberg said, everything is online. Einstein said, everything is relative. And Einstein was the cleverest of all. The success of language revival ought to be relative. It is impossible to reclaim the sleeping beauty tongue exactly as it used to be. The success of language revival is relative. No language reclamation can be fully successful. As an eighth Jew, Jerry Seinfeld once said, not that there is anything wrong with that, I believe that if someone like butterflies, it would be better for them to have a dirty, injured butterfly that is alive, rather than a perfectly beautiful butterfly stuck on the wall. An alive, revived Hebrew, albeit hybridic, mixed, cross-fertilized, is better than an authentic, pure, perfect Hebrew that is dead. Revival linguistics changes the field of historical linguistics, for example, by weakening the family tree model, which implies that a language is supposed to have only one parent. A revived language, as we shall see next week in the case of Hebrew, ought to result in a hybrid, based on several languages at the same time. Revival linguistics complements the established field of documentary linguistics, which records endangered languages before they fall asleep. Revival linguistics revises the fields of grammaticography, writing grammars, and lexicography, writing dictionaries. I would like to propose, controversially, that grammars and dictionaries ought to be written for language reclamation in a user-friendly way, accessible to lay communities, not only to professional linguists. For example, we should avoid highfalutin, flowery, often Latin-based grammatical terminology. We should also employ a user-friendly spelling. But what do we do with modern concepts or technological inventions that there are no words for them in the traditional language? It is for the indigenous community to decide whether or not they would like to concoct a word for a new concept.